throughout the history of boxing's glamour heavyweight division, there have been numerous instances where more than one man has laid claim to being champion, or where separate sanctioning bodies recognise their own champion. So why is it so hard to crown one universally recognised world champion like they do in other sports? We'll start first with how we got here, and later touch on the sanctioning bodies which govern the sport. Throughout the 1800s, it was predominantly newspapers and sporting magazines that determined who the champion was. In Britain, the Sporting Life, and in America, the Police Gazette, were considered the leading authorities on the sport. In 1881, the Police Gazette published its intention to be the first organised boxing sanctioning body, and they recognised their first champion beginning in 1882. In 1891, the National Sporting Club was founded in London, a private club that did more than any other organisation to establish boxing in Britain. Meanwhile, in America, the New York State Athletic Commission controlled much of American boxing by the early 1900s, and after prize fighting was legalised in 1920, it was formalised as the governing body for boxing in New York. In 1911, the International Boxing Union, otherwise known as IBU, was formed, the first attempt to try create a unified international governing body for professional boxing. By 1922, however, the UK had withdrawn their support and the New York State Athletic Commission were never really that committed. In 1921, the National Boxing Association, otherwise known as the NBA, was formed by representatives of 13 states upset by the influence held by New York. This led the New York Commission and the NBA sometimes recognising different champions. The Ring magazine, recognised as the Bible of Boxing, was founded in 1922. Ring was the first to begin ranking boxers and issued their own championship belt, which was the first to recognise a lineal succession to the title awarded to whoever beat the current champion or the man who beat the man. The National Sporting Club reformed as the British Boxing Board of Control in 1929 and acted as the governing body for professional boxing in Great Britain. By 1942, the International Boxing Union was under the control of the Nazis, who effectively destroyed the organisation as they had much of continental Europe. From the remnants of the IBU, the European Boxing Union, or EBU, was born in 1946. In 1949, the International Boxing Club, or otherwise known as the IBC, was formed to promote boxing at Madison Square Garden. The IBC monopolised American boxing between 1949 and 1955, a stranglehold brought about by their ties with notorious mobster Frankie Carbo. The courts ordered the dissolution of the IBC in 1959, and in 1961, Carbo and his IBC cohorts were sent to federal prison on conspiracy and extortion charges. In 1962, the National Boxing Association changed its name to World Boxing Association, or WBA, to reflect the growing popularity of boxing worldwide, but it remained USA-dominated. The World Boxing Council was established in 1963 by 11 founder countries who were dismayed at the American dominance in WBA. The New York Commission, British Boxing Board of Control and EBU, although they crowned their own champions, lacked international prominence, leading them to back the WBC. In 1977, the ring was embroiled in a ranking scandal, paid by who else but Don King. King had paid Ring to falsify or inflate the records of 11 boxers in order for them to qualify for a televised boxing tournament. However, the TV network uncovered the crooked dealings and cancelled the tournament. As a result, Ring lost all credibility and the TV networks were left with no choice but to recognise the rankings of WBA and WBC from then on, effectively handing them control of championship boxing. An internal coup within the WBA saw them become strongly influenced by Latin American nations, subsequently moving their headquarters to Panama City. Eventually, this caused member states of the United States Boxing Association USBA, 
to set up an international body known as the United States Boxing Association International in 1983, before renaming themselves the International Boxing Federation. More discontent within the WBA saw 27 delegates walk out of their 1988 annual convention. They went on to form the World Boxing Organization later that year. In the IBF, rankings and title shots were almost immediately paid for. The scheme would go on for over 13 years until the IBF president and three other officials were incarcerated in 2000. 23 boxers and 7 promoters were revealed as being involved in fights tainted by bribes to the IBF, including Don King, Bob Arum, Dino Duva and Cedric Kushner. After a number of controversial ranking decisions in 2011, many of the Ring Ranking Advisory Panel resigned. They went on to form the Transnational Rankings Board in 2012. Any credibility the ring title may have had left evaporated when Ring inextricably introduced a new championship policy in 2012. Many members and media outlets were extremely critical of the new policy, and it prompted boxing historian and founder of Cyber Boxing Zone Mike DeLisa to say the ring had forfeited its credibility by pulling names out of its ass to name fighters as champions. However, Ring and IBF are not the only ones to be embroiled in controversy, as boxing judges have claimed that they were influenced by WBA to judge certain fighters competing for their titles more favourably. There have also been other claims of bribes paid to WBA officials to obtain championship bout opportunities or higher placement within the organisation's rankings. The WBC has been sued more than any other sanctioning body for violating their own rules and regulations. The most famous instance when a court found them guilty of over a dozen violations, leading the WBC to threaten to file for bankruptcy and liquidation, which ultimately forced an out-of-court settlement. The WBO once refused to attend a summit with other sanctioning bodies where the possibility of a single champion in each division was to be discussed. Like the WBA, the WBO has also been guilty of including a dead fighter in their rankings. But unlike the WBA, the WBO actually promoted the dead fighter in their rankings, not once, but twice. So here we are today. Four major sanctioning bodies and countless other minor organizations, each one crowning their own champions with a track record of stripping and assigning new champions indiscriminately, all with their own ranking systems which are often removed from reality, which leads to inappropriate and mismatched mandatory challenges. Their countless titles too have become little more than promotional tools garnering more and more sanctioning fees and providing a platform for promoters and broadcasters to sell and merchandise fights. Each sanctioning body with their own individual agendas have all been embroiled in scandals and plagued with corruption. And on the extreme rare occasion when we do get a unified, undisputed champion, their reign has usually been short-lived due to the politics and corruption that is ever present in the sport. So how do boxing fans, let alone casual fans, cut through all the fog to see who is the actual heavyweight world champion? Despite the wrongdoing of all the sanctioning bodies, Throughout history, one man has stood out above all others as champion. The man who beat the man. The lineal heavyweight champion. That's not to say the lineal championship is exact, perfect or without fault, or even that the best boxer in the division is necessarily always the lineal champion. But it does provide an incorruptible, unbiased, unequivocal champion with a clear line of succession. That is what we will begin to cover in part two.